All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I can start my lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Racha Kodash, the bondage of the apostles, and elders of the great millstone, Shalom to the elected of nation of Israel. This is Aratiza, once again from the great millstone, JMS Atlanta camp, with another video. All right, and the title of this video is Strive for the Mastery. All right, or Strive for the Masteries. And, um, you know, just going to put a couple of words out there. It's got a you know, definition with a couple of precepts dealing with, you know, the topic of mastery and, you know, us being the authorities on this book known as the Bible. All right. Because the Lord has you know, called us brothers to basically teach, you know, to, you know, lead and be the, you know, forerunners, so to speak, of course, beginning with the apostles and elders. You know, you know, those of us, Lord willing, we are the elect, you know, but we've been called to teach this word, man. And to be able to be in order to teach this word at a, at a, at a high level and give it our all, we have to actually, you know, know what these scriptures are talking about and know the breakdowns, you know, which is something that the apostles and elders, uh, you know, constantly push on us, man. You know, that's why they're always testing us and. You know, they throw out these little, these, not I won't say little, but they throw out these challenges and you know, things of that nature to keep, you know, to keep us sharp, keep us on point. You know, because sometimes certain things will slip if you didn't go over it in a while, you know. And that's that's part of this flesh, too. You know, you'd be forgetting stuff. That's just this corrupt flesh, you know, our minds. But, you know, that's still no excuse to not know. You know, the breakdowns, especially the core breakdowns, things that, you know, we, we covered, you know, over and over, you know, but essentially you really want to master everything. But this is, the, you know, most part just going to the more of the knowledge aspect as far as, you know, being studious and stu studying and just being a sharp brother. You know, we all got to be sharp. That, and that includes, includes, you know, me as well. You know, when we do these videos, you know, we always you know, basically we're putting ourselves first, you know, the brother that's actually doing the video, it's not to, you know, point the finger like, I got it and you don't, I know all of us, you know, to who may struggle in that area, got to be sharp, man, you got to be sharp, and I just want to get a couple of scriptures here, um, matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read one first and then get the definition that, that, that I got right there. I'm going to start here, First, First Corinthians 9 and 25. Um, matter of fact, I'll start up, verse uh, 24, it says, First uh, Corinthians 9, 24, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Yeah, so we're on we on like a we on a race, but it's not a race against you know the man next to you. It's really a race for yourself. You know, we on this this race, this this this. And it's a it's a it's a race of endurance, not not sprinting to see how fast you can get to that finish line, but how long you can endure. This is an endurance race. You know, so it says um verse twenty five. It says in every man. That striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Okay, which the word temperate means um, moderation or to have self-control. You know, which is very important. Like Apostle Gabar say that, that the key to this truth is uh, balance. And essentially, what temperance is: having self-control, not having too much and not having too little. You want to be right, right in the middle. You know, balance. That's essentially what temperance is. But what we're striving for the mastery. Now, when you read this verse, but matter of fact, I'm 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 finish it. It says every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Today is talking about the people of this world. You know, you got people in this world that's striving for uh basically having glory on this side, you know. But it says, but we an incorruptible. So we, we, you know, the things we do pertain to what we're looking for in the future. Because we we're not looking for nothing in this world. We understand 
that this world is corrupt, it's wicked. And as the scripture says, the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal, roughly paraphrasing. So the people in this world that you see, they do certain things so that they could get some type of status or glory in this current world. And they're going to find out that it was it was all for nothing because this world, this present world is going to pass away. This rulership, you know. So it says, um, going back, it says, every man is striving for the mastery, which is basically what we're doing. All right. We're trying to master ourselves. We're trying to, you know, uh, rule ourselves, rule our spirits, rule our flesh, you know, and it's basically trying to be perfect, you know try to get it right and a part of a part of that is actually knowing these scriptures you know having a, a level of mastery over these scriptures over over what the scriptures is talking about especially if the lord has called us to be teachers man you know now i want to go from there since i just said that i want to get this definition for mastery in uh google all right this is mastery it says uh Comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or accomplishment. And then I got the sentence there. She played with some mastery. Proficiency, ability, capability, knowledge, understanding. Command, grasp. Yeah, we want to have a, we want to have, we want to have a, we want to have a grasp, a grasp. All right. On these scriptures, man. See that know how. It says control or superiority over someone or something yeah so we want to have control over these scriptures we want to have a, a level of authority we want to be authorities all right over the bible man to where these hey we always say uh, you know the apostles elders brothers are the, the top bible scholars on the earth and, and rightfully so that's how it should be you know because the lord has you know bestowed upon us his holy spirit which is how we're able to even going to these breakdowns and going to the scriptures and make it readily available for everybody else to learn who the, who the Lord has um, opened their ears, man. All right. It says um, control superiority over someone or something. This is control, superiority, domination, command, supremacy, triumph, victory, the upper hand. All right, which is why you see these Christians fighting tooth and nail to try to come against the Israelites, but they always fail. Why? Because we have more of a superior stature, if you will, over the Bible. Why? Because brothers study, brothers have, well, f well first and foremost, brothers have the Holy Spirit. All right, the, the Lord has, you know, sent down his Holy Spirit, all right, the, the comforter to get brothers his understanding, man. Why everybody else is 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 just basically winging it, you know, just doing or they going by what they what they pass or they, they preach in their church say, which he don't got the Holy Spirit, and they find themselves falling short. All right, government power, you know, some of the other definitions here. So this is what having mastery is. So not only having mastery over ourselves, but you know, just for the sake of the topic. Just as far as the knowledge aspect, you know, we got to be think of us, think of ourselves as masters over the scriptures. But to think that you got to put the groundwork in study, you know, and it's not like it's hard. Like you have to search far and deep to get these things. Hey, the videos are available. You know, the, the different brothers, are, uh, just, a you know, a phone call or a text message away if you, if you need a. You know, you're not sure about a certain uh, a verse or a breakdown. So it's not like you you have to even search for. You know, these things is like literally right at your fingertips. You know, so all of us should know the book of Revelations front and back. <laughs> you should know that front and back. You should know all damn. You should just you should just know it like sharp, you know. Second, you know, just different book. It was really the whole Bible, but I'm just thinking of the certain prophetic books that you know we always go through that are that are really speaking you know as the scripture says you know the, the vision shall speak and not lie though it's you know we in that time so these things we should be like super like razor sharp on man masters you know
There was another one I wanted to hit uh, right here, which says people also ask, what does it mean to ma to to mastery something? It says uh, the authority of a master, dominion, the upper hand in a contest or competition, superiority, ascendancy, possession or display of great skill uh, or technique, skill or knowledge that makes one master of a subject, command. So you see brothers, all right, especially the apostles and elders, when they go to the blue letter, they go to the Greek, they go to the Hebrew, they break it down. They link it with this, they link it with that, bring this precept out, they bring this article, they make this historical reference. That takes, that's skill, man. <laughs> that is, that is skill beyond measure that only a select few men have. The world don't have that, you know, but it took years and years of labor in, 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 you know, dealing in the spirit to obtain that, man. You know, but the Lord has given us that spirit also. You just got to utilize it. You know, and uh, yeah, that was the main point on the, that definition of a mastery. You can go more into it. But I just want to hit that main point um, and get the rest of the scriptures I got. Just a few more. All right. First Timothy four. And. Um, I started at 12, the point is in 13. It says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word. In conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. You know, yeah, so we got to, you know, keep in mind that we're examples of being a follower of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. And then it says 13, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, which the word doctrine means the teachings. And we go into this word uh, or the term give attendance it means to give oneself over to, you know, or to be to be. Uh, um, what's the word? Uh, to be. Just basically fu fully submerged like you're like you're like you're like you're addicted, you're obsessed, <laughs> you know, you got to be obsessed with this truth. Which, which also entails being obsessed with the knowledge of knowing. Like, I, I just, I just got to know. Like you, you, you come across a passage or a verse. It should, it should bother you. Like, dang, I don't, I don't know it. I don't know this, man. You know what? Nah, I, 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 you know what? I ain't gonna finish the chapter until I get the answer on this. I got, I got to know what this is talking about. That's that goes to what mastering the scriptures, mastering the knowledge, or. Giving yourself over to, and when you go into this this phrase, um, which is to give attendance to reading, that's not just talking about you know, of course, you read in your downtime and your in your in your leisure time, you know, you're reading the word, but that's really talking about giving attendance to reading to the church, such as what I'm what I'm doing right now, and what other brothers are doing, hell, right now also, you know, throughout the day, doing videos, going to camp. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna show you. We go to the um the other translations that they got here. Let's see if we can pull it up. We go to the NLT. All right, it says, "Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church." See that? Encouraging the believers and teaching them. Like I mentioned earlier, the word doctrine means uh, teachings. You know, so our, our focus should be on that. But to be able to do that, you got to study. You got to know what it is that you want to teach the people. See? NIV, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Which, again, which is what we do, you know, on, on a weekly basis, you know, as far as, you know, doing the, um, the weekly lessons. But they're ultimately on highways and byways, man. See? ESV, until I come, devote yourself to public reading. Right, same, same, same thing. So yeah, we gotta we gotta be addicted to, to teaching. But to, to be able to do that, again, it goes back to being studious, studying. Alright, um, yeah, that was the main point. Let's continue on. Don't want a video to be too long. This is uh Ecclesiastes. 
Okay, it's the 20, uh, 25th, I think it's the 16th chapter. Yeah, chapter 16. In Sirach, verse uh, 25. It says, I will show forth doctrine. Matter of fact. Uh, yeah, let's start there. Uh, Sirach 16, 25. I will show forth doctrine in weight and declare his knowledge exactly. See that? Whose knowledge? The knowledge of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which essentially is contained in the Holy Scriptures. And we show forth the doctrine and weight. What's the doctrine? We just read his teachings. You know? And it says, I and declare his knowledge exactly, exactly as is written, word for word. That's why we, you know, have the example of the apostles and elders going into the Greek, going into the Hebrew. We want to show the people exactly what it's saying. You know, we want to expound. You know, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a precise manner. You know, but to do that, again, it, it comes with uh, it comes with time. You know, discipline, studying. You know, it says the works of the Lord are done in judgment from the beginning. And from the time he made them, he disposed the parts thereof. Yeah, so that was, you know, that was the main point. It was in verse 25. But the knowledge... Of Yahweh we are declare, which, 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 which declare means to put forth or to speak out. We want to be exact, you know. We don't want to, uh, like as brothers say, don't wing it. Or we'll just blah, 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 I don't know, I, I, you know. It's really you saying, I don't know. Very, very rarely. Very rarely, if not at, at all. Like the scriptures say, um, when say, you have unction from the Holy One and you know all things, we got to get to that. You know, just know, just knowing it, man. Now, just especially if you, you know, if you've been around for uh, for a number of years, there's really no excuse. Because, like I said, everything is 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 readily at at our at our fingertips. All right. Next scripture, Jeremiah three and fifteen. It says, "And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you." With knowledge and understanding. All right. Now the word feed is a metaphor for teach. So the Lord is going to send forth pastors or, or, or teachers. All right. Leaders. All right. According to his mind. That's going to feed or teach the people with knowledge and understanding. All right. So that's a big part of why Yahweh Shem Shai set us up. You know, beginning with the apostles and elders and, you know, brothers, of course. We're set up to teach the people, you know. So we have to we have to keep that in mind that we we are teachers, you know. You know you have different levels, you know, certain you know tiers and whatnot. But still, we're all set up to teach the people, teach Israel. And having that lot, you got to study. You know, you gotta you gotta know the breakdowns. You know, you have to know it. It's like there's really no if, ands, or buts about that. All right. Mastery. Going back to that definition. Last scripture. All right. Uh, Nehemiah 8. In uh, verse 8. All right. And this is uh, you read up. It goes into the. It goes to Ezra. Or Ezra's. All right. He was basically, you know, teaching on the highways and byways. And just a footnote. It goes into his camp. All right, for all the, you know, when you read up here, all right, so Ezra reads the law. You, know, you could you could read the whole chapter, start from one or whatever. But for all the anti-Israelite camp people out there, well, what about this? All right, Ezra had an Israelite camp, man. You know, it even it even gives their names, as you see there in verse four. It, has, it names them by name. He had an Israelite camp. You know, so the question the question is, you know, the hell is wrong with you? But anyway, we get to the point. Verse eight. All right. Nehemiah eight and eight. It says, so they read in the book of the law, just like how we do every Saturday or Friday or Sunday, you know, which, whichever day brothers go out to speak, depending on the camp and their schedule. We do the same thing. It says, so they read in the book of the law distinctly. Let me, let me uh. Look that word up. 
distinctly <clears throat> in a way that is readily distinguishable by the senses clearly. See, we read clearly. That's why we sometimes we we, we break down literally every word. You know, we got the reader, the brother read. We break down that word, break down that. You know, because we, we actually want you to understand what's was being was being read. It says, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. But then, it, but then what? It, it goes. It, it basically means that Ezra and his men that was with him, they had the mastery over the law, so they was able to do that. All right, when you go into Again, other translations, you know, we like we like doing that from time to time. You go into the, the NLT. They read from the book of the Lord, the Most High, and clearly explained the meaning of what was being read, helping the people understand each passage. See? But what? If you don't know what's being read, how, how will you be able to do that? So they would have to have study, labored, and stayed up late nights. And, you know, if you fast forward to our, to our time, you have to sit and watch them, watch those those videos. Even if it's two or three hours, you can sit your ass there and take notes, man, and soak it in. And then test yourself. Go back over it and see if you can, if you can, if you can teach it yourself. You know? It's about being being masters of, of this book, man. Hebrew Hebrew Israelite men, prophets, teachers, authorities over the book, over the scriptures. There's really no it's really no no if ands or buts about it, man. You gotta know these scriptures. You know. So I think that was it, man. That was that's pretty much the point, man. That that was something that I was just, just meditating on. Cause you know that you know things are getting tighter, you know, with you know, with Brothers are getting getting tightened up, so to speak, being uh, called to be more on point, and that's just part of it, man. The 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 knowledge part, knowing these scriptures, knowing the breakdowns, and and fully coming into our into our lot as uh as teachers by the word of the Most High, you know. So I'm a, I'm gonna sign off there. All right, giving our praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Shemiah Osha, Bashim Rachakwadash, and a low one to the next. Uh, video, I'm going to say Shalom.